Welcome to the lesson that will demonstrate how to put your PowerPoint image portfolio together. You might want to look at the other documents that you picked up for this project, one of them being the rubric, which will explain how you will be graded for this project. The other document is called Citing Image Sources. So every time you grab an image, make sure you put the image source in the right-hand column so that you can credit them in your PowerPoint presentation. I want to talk a little bit about images. When you grab images, make sure you get large quality images. For this project, you will be turning all your images into a square before you begin. I'm going to demonstrate why you need to make an image a square. If I were to save this image, I'll go ahead and choose Save Image As, and get it to that folder intended for this project. I'll go ahead and name that image, and I'm going to go and just imagine that I have not made it a square and I add it to my portfolio here. If I were to add that image without making it a square, I'm going to demonstrate what that will look like. So I'll go ahead and click on the auto shape in PowerPoint, which is a square. I will then go to Format, choose the Shape Fill option, and then choose Picture. I will then locate that image in the folder and add it. Now if I were to go ahead and hit the F5 key, you can see what that looks like you can see how distorted that image is. You will lose serious points by not taking the time to crop your images properly. Additionally, that image is small and the smaller the image, the more pixelated it will be in your presentation. You want to get images that are at least 500 pixels wide and high. Keep that in mind when you're getting images. You could guarantee a large image by when you choose the image search and I do need to remind you when you're doing an image search that you set it to safe. Make sure safe search strict is set to strict. You can scroll down and choose large. That way you will get larger images as long as the image is not filtered. So I'm going to go ahead and locate an image at this point. I'm going to do something a little different with this image. I'm going to make it a square and I'm, I'm going to move some of these people here on the right in front of the woman at the beach. So I'll go ahead and save the image as, I'll call it Beach 1. I'm now going to go ahead and open up Pixlr. Choose the photo editor online. When this window loads, go ahead and choose Advanced. Because I was having trouble opening Pixlr with Firefox, I went ahead and opened up Google Chrome. So let's try that. When the window loads, go ahead and choose Open Image from Computer. Go ahead and locate that image that you just saved. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this image so that it is a square. To make this image a square, you're going to go to Image, Image Size, and check the width and height. Take note of the smallest number. In this case, the smallest number is 1,536. I'll say OK. You're going to select, in this case, the Marquee Tool Make sure that it is a square and not a circle. And where it says Constraint, you want to choose Fixed Size. Make sure the feather is set to zero. You're going to then change the dimension so they're both the same size. So we'll type in 1,536. I will then click down. I will move the marquee. When you're happy with what's inside of that marquee, you can choose Image and Crop. I'm now going to choose File save. I'm going to set the quality to 100%. I will name this one Beach 2 so that I don't overwrite the original. I will then say OK. I will locate the folder and choose Save. With that saved, I'm now going to open up the original again. And in this case, that's Beach 1. What I want to do is I want to grab this larger man here in the ocean and paste him on Beach 2. I'll take the lasso tool and I will select him as best as possible. I might zoom in with the zoom tool to get closer to see what's going on. I could hold down the space bar of the key bar to move it. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab him as best I can with the lasso and I will then with that selection I will choose Edit, Copy, I'll select Beach 2 and choose Edit, Paste. I will then take the Move tool and move him. Now he's a bit large in comparison with this person over here on the right. So what I could do is I could choose Edit, Free Transform, 
and from a corner I could drag in until he's smaller and more proportionate and hit the enter key when you're done. So that actually looks like it could fit in. I might zoom in and I might take the eraser tool in the tools window and clean things up. If you need to, you can always come up and change the brush size by clicking up at the top, but I don't want to do that. I will choose View, Actual Pixels, so you can see what's going on. I might choose View Zoom Out, so you can get a better idea of what's happening here. You could also maybe add something else to the photo. You can get really creative. This was just a simple example of what you can do. I will now choose File, Save. I will call it Beach 3. I will set it to 100% in quality. I will choose OK and then get it to that folder. With the images saved, I will return to the PowerPoint. I will click on the auto shape, choose format, will then choose shape fill picture, locate that beach to. I will then go to the after, go to the shape fill picture, and then beach three. And then I would give it a name, maybe at the beach. That's not very creative. I might call it illusions at the beach. Come up with a fun name to represent what you did. If I were to go ahead and click the F5 key to preview this, you can see that I did not lose quality because I squared the image and I got a large image. This concludes the session on how to square your images and prepare them for the PowerPoint presentation.